Alright guys, can I just be honest for a second? There's a few things that make me facepalm, meaning that just kind of make me shake my head and say, did they really just say that or did they really just do that? And one of the things that when I speak or when I go around and I see youth pastors or youth groups or I guess any pastor, anyone saying, is they use this verse in Matthew 18 where it says, for where two or more are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst. And you've probably heard that. Usually they quote it when there's a soft piano or an electric guitar in the background. And then what they're saying is like, Jesus is here right now. It's beautiful. The, the spirit is moving and is that probably true yes amen but what they're subtly also not realizing they're saying is that are you saying that does that mean Jesus isn't there when there's only one of us like they use it to say oh there's two or three of us so he must be here as if when there's one of us or when we're just in our room reading our Bible he just sorry guys there's only there's not two of you so I just can't show up yet I just can't show up when you're reading your Bible no he, he doesn't do that but I think it comes from a misunderstanding of Matthew 18 so real quick I want to check out the verse and then talk about for a second now Matthew 18 is not about the presence of Jesus meaning where is he there's other verses about that this is a verse about reconciliation what do you do when you have a problem with someone when someone has sinned against you when someone needs to apologize when you need to apologize and Jesus says when there's a problem when there's reconciliation that needs to happen he shows us this new way to be human which is what Matthew is really doing anyways the Sermon on the Mount is kind of like this new human manifesto and so he says if your brother sins against you go and tell him his fault between you and him alone so go to him don't post it on Facebook Twitter go to him and say hey I've been sinned against I, I, I feel like I've been bullied I feel like I've been hurt by you and if he listens to you you have gained your brother and if you've experienced this you know that's true and then he says but if he does not listen take one or two others along with you that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses which is a reference to the Old Testament and then it keeps going on and in the end for it says for where two or three are gathered in my name there I am among them so it seems to me like he's actually saying hey this is about reconciliation this is what it means to be human to deal with problems in a way where it's not just like a patched up so job where it's just going to split again when there's tension it's saying hey this is true reconciliation true healing how does that happen and jesus says go to your brother say hey i've been I'm, i feel like i'm hurt man i feel like you shouldn't have said it like that i feel like you shouldn't have done it that way and and a lot of times i've experienced it myself either me hurting someone or, or or me going to someone and there's beauty there when you just approach him in humility gentleness and honest conversation and then but it says if that doesn't work then hey bring a few people with you because there's a few things about that that are true first of all when you bring a few people with you usually they will call you out of their brothers and sisters and say hey I don't think that's wrong what you accused him of or they will say hey yeah you're right let's go let's go have a chat because we love this person it comes down to love and then lastly I think the fact that Jesus is saying where two or more are gathered I am there in the midst of them that's not again like the way we use it like I mentioned in the beginning but it's more kind of a double-edged sword. There's a huge encouragement there, and there's a huge warning. Now, I would say the encouragement is that when you go to reconcile with your brothers, and there's a group of you, Jesus is there, right? He, he can help you walk through it. It's sometimes hard and awkward and messy. Ask for guidance. Ask the Spirit to lead you. Ask for gentleness, humility, respect, and honor for that other person. And then it's a huge warning because Jesus is there, the Lord of the universe, the person who knows your heart, the person who knows their heart. He's right there and he sees it all. So you can't fake it. You can't just kind of try to always act like the victim or always act like something's wrong. But you can say, hey, maybe I am the victim, maybe I'm not. But he's there, he sees the hearts and there's a deep accountability when Jesus is there. So it's a warning and an encouragement. So I hope that encourages you. I hope if there's anyone in your life that you need to maybe just call up or maybe chat with, you need to apologize to, they need to maybe apologize to you. Matthew 18 is the way to do that. Matthew 18 verses 15 through 21. So if you need what Jesus, the words he says on this topic, flip there. So I love you guys. You guys are awesome. Talk to you later.